Hello guys, I just uh, I just played this game. It's gonna be a good game to do a voiceover through, so we're just gonna watch it again together, and I am going to voice over what my thought is here. And I realized my own microphone was left on during this game, so you might hear me um, while playing the game. Like, for example, the typing right there. But besides the point, so... They have mostly AD, Karthus bot with Janna. Uh, I look at Ezreal Karma, I say that's a poke lane. I look at Shen Top, that's more or less a farm lane. Granted, it is gankable. It's not like the win con if uh, you know Shen gets behind or ahead, like Aatrox will scale harder. The main thing to look at is the mid lane. If Zed starts rolling Echo, then he's going to start rolling Ezreal and Aatrox by themselves. So that's kind of the lane to focus on. Um, and, uh, you know, normally with Karthus, Janna, you could potentially pull off a gank level 2, but it doesn't look very optimal, especially with Karthus being ridiculously strong early. As far as a build goes, you'll see what I decide to build as I go for an Hourglass, simply because not only are they AD, but having both Zed and Karthus, I can dodge their abilities with an Hourglass, you know, their, their main damage. And uh, I wasn't paying enough attention here. If I had, I would have walked over to them and queued them earlier. And I would have got Ezreal to full. In fact, I was trying to give him that one. So, start the clear is a little bit slower than normal. Just because I stopped to do that. I didn't realize they took poke. And I'm doing the Raptors first. I kind of mess up a bit. I should just auto here and then wait for E instead of pressing Q right there. That's just kind of, it, it decreases the clear speed a little bit. But that's fine, because I'm going to gank Zed anyway. Uh, Echo used something. I don't see if Zed has used his W, but I assume he's used everything when he uses whatever kind of dash he has. So I'm just sitting here waiting. He flashes, flash stun, and bam. That's it. I didn't even get press the attack off there. We just did so much damage to him. And uh, bots trading some s somehow. Drop a ward to make sure, hey, you know, I just flashed. So I want to get my blue buff, you know, safely. Sure enough, Lee is showing up. And I, I run. I, I probably could have baited it a little bit harder since my team was collapsing. But I'm just being, like, super, super safe. In fact, I'm being too safe because it takes me so long to follow up with them. That if I had been just a lot more aggressive there it would have been just fine he didn't realize that i didn't have flash so he flashes the stun flash and this is where we mess up the biggest this game he leeson lands a massive super long range q onto echo to actually escape and we keep going because I, I i almost do that but not quite i couldn't get close enough to give him the healing i didn't have my w yet so Echo goes and gives away a free kill. Not the worst, though. You know, a lot of worse things could have happened. I still get my blue buff. I still get a Scuttle Crab. You know. Lee's gonna go bot, get the Scuttle. Bot should be aware of that. That uh, Lee would go bot and get the Scuttle, but bot laners never pay attention to that. And so, sure enough, Lee is bot lane right now. You can see in the little mini-map. And uh, he didn't even participate, actually. So he went down there for nothing. Uh, the Karthus is just Karthus, and deals with the teleport without any issues. And without Echo getting that early lead, I'd say, it would be a little bit more rough for him, because he's about to lose some of a wave, but it's fine. Aatrox is doing just fine farming, and, you know, Ezreal and Karma are doing okay. They want to scale regardless. So, yep, just walk back just in case I don't want it to reset. I thought it was going to burn, but just to be sure. And so now normally after Raptors, I'd back right here, but I looked at the blue buff timer, and since I'm sitting on such a high blue buff timer, I decided, hey, I might as well just go, uh, you know, go get my golems. Simple as that.
Okay, and people are saying that they can't hear my fan in the background. I'm just gonna say that yes, my computer is dying. I can also hear my fan in the background. I wish that wasn't the case. Um, that's good to keep note of. That yes, you can actually hear it. You can hear my computer dying. I was hoping I could hit the 1550 so I could go get Bammies as well, but I don't, so you can also go this. And bam, use most of my gold. Ruby Crystal to build into Bammies eventually, a little bit extra mobility, and uh, a pink always helps. Of course, he wasn't bot lane, and he's finished, and he had no bots, or he had no bot side camps, so he's gonna gank somewhere, and that was mid. And so I'm running to that as fast as possible, because I think Echo will escape, and he does. And this, this Lee Sin super greeds for this, uh, yeah, that's just extremely greedy. So not only does he die, but he gives the dragon, that's probably the biggest play that happens this game because he dies, you know, free dragon. If Zed was smart, he would have came and tried to kill me and collapse with bot since bots pushed in, but I guess they weren't paying attention enough to notice that I did that. Of course, Echo could have helped me too, so it's not like they can really contest it. But yeah, I'm looking at his blue like, hey, if Lee Sin comes again, we can definitely kill him. Echo's down for that, so he's sticking around. Realistically, I could even give him the blue here if I wanted to. He's pretty ahead. But Lee isn't here. And Lee doesn't actually show up whatsoever. So since he didn't go to his blue, that means he went topside. And he is, you know, going to do something up there while I am free to take his Gromp. Yeah, Janna, Karthus have a lot of disengage, and so I don't really have much I can do for that lane. I can't really jump in. I do have Flash in four seconds. Maybe I wasn't paying attention to that. I could have pulled off something, maybe, but I just decided to give him a double stack Q heal, which actually hit both of them, so it'll help them sustain in lane a little bit. I've done absolutely nothing for Aatrox, by the way. I haven't gone top, I haven't helped him at all. He's just winning lane without any issues, so that's massive. If top lane was having any kinds of issues, then, uh, you know, this game would be a little bit different. But Echo is just 1v1ing Zed at this point. So, Zed really needs to chill on that. Echo gets super lucky. Look at that health bar. The Karthus are, took a Dark Harvest stack, but not enough for his life. If Karthus had R, I actually don't know. Maybe if Karthus had R when Zed was fighting him, Echo definitely would have died, but... Maybe he had just leveled and got it. There's not really much more to say. I'm just still farming. Really, that's about it. I'm looking at the Herald, trying to say, hey, do I go for it? Right now is not a bad back. If I backed at this very moment, it would be a Cinderhulk back and a pink, which would be good. But I'm kind of looking at this like, hey, I warded the Herald, and there's a reason I warded the Herald. If they see me on the Herald warding it, they know, hey, he has Vision of Herald now, so that means that you can't do Herald, right? Like, Lee Sin understands that. Lee Sin saw me ward on the map, which means that he knows that he can't go for the Herald, which is perfect for me, because that means I can do the Herald without him realizing that I did that as, like, it's like a trick, you know? It's like you put a ward down to get yourself Vision, but in reality, you're putting a ward down to fake them into thinking you only have Vision, when in real, like, you know, in reality, you're actually doing it. And so since he can't do Rift, he goes for a gank mid. And, you know, that goes however it goes. You know, many junglers could argue, hey, it's more important to keep the lead with your mid laner than it is to get the Herald. But I, I disagree. Since there's no guarantee that going mid and trying to pull off a gank will work. If I see a free objective, I'm going to take it like that. A lot of the ways that I jungle is a lot more of, well, 
I I play risky a lot, but at the same time, I go for at least like some sort of reward in the situation that I'm doing, and that's why I probably don't gank as much as other junglers simply because I want to make sure that the things I'm doing pay off. So, Cinder Hulk. And I actually grabbed Stopwatch here, which is really, really good, I'll find out. Because I wanted to go Hourglass, like I said. Um, but I just had that 650 amount. I decided, okay, I'll just sit on paper bags. I don't really need movement speed that much. I'm going to press the attack into Lee Sin anyway, so... That'll be fine. I probably could have smited that. It's so much faster if you smite the big raptor and then you go for it but oh well i'm holding it for a fight or dragon and speaking of that fight i'm seen on this ward i'm really surprised that zed doesn't really back up at all you know he just kind of gets jumped on in fact i look at the damage i'm just like okay he's dead in fact i didn't even need to ulti i don't even know maybe i didn't even need to flash I was just super greedy by Zed. To truly see the stars, Zed has died what, like, how many times now? I don't know, maybe four? Alright, so, when you're using a Herald, you, you want to get the tower to less plates first. So, that's kind of what I'm waiting for, is I really want to Herald, and then just in case... I use that hourglass to make sure the Karthus ult doesn't finish me off. I didn't have my W up. I wouldn't have survived. Or maybe I would have, but it would have been a little bit close. So I just hourglass just to, just for safekeeping. And they are pretty protective of it. Even Janna came mid uh, to make sure we couldn't get that fifth and final plate and the first tower. Which, that's fine. You know, that's, that's a lot of plates into Echo's pocket. So that's pretty huge. Aatrox Shen lane has not been touched at all. And because of that, Aatrox just slowly wins over time. That's what should happen in that matchup. Um, yeah. And so, also because of that, I was low. I hadn't bought. I used my Hourglass, so I just conceded that dragon. That's fine. You know, normally, of course, I want that Mountain Dragon. It's super good on me. But I don't have any real true tanks, plus I don't have my ulti, so there's not really a way I could have fought for that. And since he's bot side, he just did the dragon, I might as well go top side and steal his camps and uh, get minion blocked. Get minion blocked a bit. Just trying to auto that thing. But yeah, I'm kind of looking for a Shen gank. I, I go past that little uh, crevice there when there's no wave, because that way you aren't seen at all, so they don't know that I'm here. Simply. And I think Shen... I don't know if Shen... No, Shen doesn't greet. He TPs back. So, which is really bad because he still will die. He's not strong enough. He's been a part of basically nothing. That we could just easily kill him. And so, Lee Sin has not helped this top lane at all. Which means, you know... It's, it's kind of it's kind of over for him simply at least for Shen Shen's lane is doomed now that of course Aatrox got tower plates and uh, you know the rest of it was shared with me so he's he's pretty big now believe it or not he's probably out farming him yep by 20 and so Aatrox has a decent amount of gold he'll get I don't even know what he'll build first, Black Cleaver, probably. And look at what's happening, bot. Two TPs bot. Not one, but two. Echo TP'd, and so did Aatrox. And Aatrox is just just going to town. Just watch him. Just destroy everything. Yeah. <laughs> you can even hear me laugh in the background a bit. Yeah, so that's super good. Another alternative 
instead of buying hourglass right away, you can sit on the, I don't even know what it's called. It's the 1100 gold upgrade. It gives you armor for all the minions you get. You can sit on that and build the rest of your items. But in this game, I really, really want that Zonia's active for both Zed and Karthus. So I just built it right away and continue to sit on the paper bags regardless. Paper bags being normal unupgraded boots, if you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't remember when that was like created as slang or where I heard that from, but normal boots I've heard is called paper bags, so that's what they are. Do Herald on spawn. I don't think he can contest. Even if he does, I have my ulti. Not that I would use it, but he's super behind. He's his ganks have not pulled off. My ganks have been efficient. So I'm literally up, what, 60 CS on Lee Sin right now, even though I've done most of the objectives in the game. It's not this guy's first time on Lee either. His, his club name is Lee. So that's how you know. Although you won't be able to know like a month from now when Riot removes that. Unfortunate. So, right here, I probably could. I probably could just stun flash. I could probably stun flash and jump on them and kill them. But I'm playing super safe. And uh, Echo goes in. Aatrox goes in. You know, if I had done a stun flash there, we would have got a kill there. But I'm just being safe. The slower you play fights as Tarek, the better, since he can obviously heal everyone whenever he gets an auto off. And there, I use it. This is the fight I'm deciding to take. Ezreal's dead, but it's it's four people versus one invulnerable me. So there's not really much they can do there. The Aatrox just flashes and kills Janna without much issue. Yeah, and we are just running it down. Normally, it's really bad to get this inhib, by the way, because if they were to have a hyper carry ADC, that could farm super fast. Um, I'll talk about that later. Just watch this fight. I've been both Zed ulted and Karthus ult at the same time, and I just, that hourglass active saved me from both. Actually, crazy good. And we all escape. But yeah, if you have like an enemy vein or so, like some sort of hyper carry that can clear waves really fast, and Karthus can, um, it's better to not get that inhib because you'll be basically far feeding them more gold early on. But the pressure is also useful too. So like, don't think just because there's a vein you shouldn't get it. It's not bad. It's just before 20 minutes, that pressure isn't used very well because Baron isn't on the map. In this game, it doesn't matter as much since we're just running it down on them. Our comp is really, really good at just chasing the enemy team down. And so all I have to do is follow my teammates and give them stuns and whatever they need, healing. Um, in case, I don't know if I talked about runes, the reason I'm going to press the attack this game is because of Lee Sin jumping onto me. Normally versus Karthus and maybe even Zed, you'd want to go phase rush against. But having press the attack versus anyone who jumps directly onto you allows you to just easily fight them without much issue. You know, phase rush would have been really good here too since I could follow up with my team significantly better. And uh, same thing goes for Glacial, but Glacial takes a while to power spike. So, any of which would have been good into this comp. Um, but I went press the attack for if Lee got ahead and I needed to fight him myself. But right now, his, his early game ganks didn't really pan out to too much. And I've outfarmed him by quite a bit. So I just keep, just keep farming anyway. Yeah, even though at this point, we have such a large lead that we could probably just run somewhere. 
and end the game. I just decide to keep farming anyway. It's better to have farmed if you end up throwing somehow. I'm going for Dead Man's. Dead Man's is really good when you don't have like a Righteous Glory glacial option to just run people down and escape. So even though I'm normally it's best with Phase Rush because of just their synergy is super good with Celerity and just other things. You can go with Press the Attack as well. Anything that gives good mobility is really good for Tarek. I, I know Tarek's that'll even go uh, Protobelt Tarek, and although I, I don't advise that, I think it's a little bit cheesy. Um, if you want to try that build out, knock yourself out. It's probably pretty pretty solid. John is greeting. Ezreal just kills him. He's over here, and this fight has played out really well. I'll just let it play out without saying much. Alt, because I see that Zed's going to go on Ezreal. Give him as much shielding as possible to survive that. Even though my autos are blocked from Shen, doesn't matter. I'm actually just autoing not for damage, but to heal Ezreal. And bam. There it is. We kill everyone. And Echo wasn't even a part of that fight. He's just running it down. So, they're going for red, but all we have to really do is follow him up and end the game with him. We are considerably stronger, even without any items bought or anything. And like I've said previously, Tarek really excels when he can auto repeatedly and heal his entire team to full. So, it, leading or uh, sieging with a lead with Tarek is probably one of the most disgusting sieges there is because you will never leave. And just your team will stay at full health. So that's all there is to it, really. And that was the game. My poor PC. I just hear that sound in the background. It makes me sad. But it's alright. Didn't die once the entire game. Either did Aatrox. I'll just show the damage here. Look, I stayed under 5k damage that, that game. It was not really a game where I was fighting a lot. It was a lot of just macro, macro and ganks, and in just ganking instead of team fighting scenarios, you don't really have that much damage, especially because I didn't even gank that much. It was more just a, a macro game. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed.